before we get started, I want to give a shout out to one of our favorite charities, the I Have a Dream Charitable Trust. This charity has been working predominantly in the Whangarei area, providing mentoring, tutoring, life coaching, and support for local Kiwi kids for up to 15 years of their schooling life. Recently, the charity has expanded their program into the Wellington area. The help that the I Have a Dream charity provides is particularly important at the moment when we're seeing a rise in youth crime in New Zealand. Crime activity that may have been prevented with the right mentor in place for these at-risk kids. If you want to find out more about the I Have a Dream charity and what they've achieved, go to ihaveadream.org.nz and have a look around their amazing website. This isn't a paid ad, we don't receive any benefits for talking about this, it's just an amazing charity that we like to support. So after you've watched this video, head over and see what they're all about. And now today's video, how to buy a home with the government. It's fairly well established at this point that New Zealand house prices are crazy high at the moment. In the past two years, the median house price in New Zealand has gone from $665,000 in March 2020, just two years ago, to $890,000 as of March 2022. It's getting harder and harder for first home buyers to get on the property ladder. A number of initiatives are already in place from the government, administered and processed through Kainga Ora. The main ones are the first home loan, which allows first home buyers buying under a certain price cap, the ability to borrow with as low as 5% deposit, with a portion of the loan being guaranteed by the government, taking the risk of low deposit borrowing off the banks. The second major scheme from Kainga Ora is the first home grant, which gifts money towards a deposit for first home buyers who meet their particular criteria. Again, these have property price caps and income caps. Into the latest initiative, the first home partner, where the government doesn't guarantee a loan for you, but instead takes an ownership in the property with you. Other privately funded versions of a co-ownership or shared ownership model exist, you own probably being the most popular one for first home buyers. And they do quite well, so it's interesting that the government has chosen to step into this space too. Effectively, the government purchases a percentage of your property to get you to the amount of lending that is available from a participating lender. At the moment, there are only two banks involved. These are Westpac and BNZ. To arrange these mortgages, you must work directly with the bank. Unlike a normal home purchase, you cannot arrange a mortgage through a broker firm like Mortgage Lab if you're buying through the first home partner scheme. Similar to the first home grant and first home loan, there are a range of client limitations that stop this being open to anyone and everyone. In the case of the first home partner program, the household income cannot exceed $130,000, which is actually $20,000 less than the income cap for the grant or the loan programs. Additionally, the house you are buying must be a new home, meaning it has received a code of compliance within the past 12 months. As a side note here, the definition of new home has caused confusion for first home buyers to be exempt from the loan to value ratio restrictions or LVR restrictions when borrowing from a bank. You must buy a new home defined by the Reserve Bank as a newly built entire dwelling completed less than six months ago. So the definition of new for loan to value ratios is within six months of completion, whereas the definition of new for first home partners is within 12 months. Huh? What's different with the first home partner compared to the other Kangaroo schemes is that there are no price caps, regional or otherwise. In other words, unlike the first home loan and first home grant, there is no stated maximum purchase price for your new home. This makes sense because the goal is for first home buyers to purchase a higher cost home by the government purchasing a percentage of the property. There is instead a maximum income for the household of $130,000, which in essence limits your borrowing with the bank. The first home partner scheme only provides a maximum of $200,000 or 25%, whichever is lesser. So although there are no stated maximum purchase price, those limitations will probably cap out at about $800,000 to $850,000 under current lending criteria. This brings about an interesting benefit though. 
that the First Home Partner program has over the other programs that Kainga Ora administers. A household earning $130,000 could, with the right budgeting, borrow around $600,000 from a bank. If that household has between them a deposit of, say, $40,000, Kainga Ora will pitch in $160,000, allowing this household to purchase a property worth, as mentioned before, around $800,000. And this is the important bit. Listen to me, listen to me. In this world of remote working, they could purchase this property almost anywhere in New Zealand. Smaller towns, in theory, should hugely benefit from this First Home Partners scheme. Towns where $800,000 could buy three to four bedrooms and a thousand square meters of land are suddenly open to buyers. Under the First Home Loan and First Home Grant schemes, the maximum purchase price for a new home in a provincial town is usually around $500,000. The First Home Partner Scheme seems to be around $800,000. $300,000 more and you get a lot more house by increasing the purchase price of a home by $300,000. So how do you exit your co-ownership agreement? Well, Kayanga Ora wants you to aim to purchase them out prior to 15 years passing. Their exact wording is to do your best to buy the share within 15 years, which seems like they will put increasing pressure on you as you approach that stage. But if you can show that your financial situation doesn't allow that, then they really can't enforce it. The program has a goals management program, which is designed to help you focus on being able to purchase their share more quickly. Hopefully at some point over the next 15 years, you receive a pay rise of some sort and which will help you buy them out. In truth though, the sooner you can buy them out, the better. You purchase their share of the property out at the current value of the house, not the original purchase price. So as the housing market goes up in the future, the cost of buying out the government becomes slightly higher. As an example, if Kaingora has put in $70,000 of a $700,000 purchase, in other words, 10% of the purchase price, and in 10 years, your house is worth a million dollars, the cost of buying out Kaunga Ora will be $100,000, being 10% of the present value of the house. So, is the first home partner a good idea? We think it definitely has its place. You do give away some of the capital gains that you would have received if you were a 100% owner, but if you're using the first home partner scheme, it's likely you may not have gotten on the property ladder at all, or been forced to purchase a house of much lower value. This scheme allows people with lower incomes, particularly those who are able to work in smaller, more affordable towns, to purchase a comparably much better property. If you fall under the banner of earning less than $130,000, the scheme may be worth investigating. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to push the like button and hit subscribe to be notified of new videos in the future. I'm Rupert Goff, thank you for watching.